I've taken a pajama pattern that has beautiful features. They're not pajamas now. I've made normal clothes that you can wear out. One is a top and one is a pair of pants. So let's see. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing. Limitless sewing. I hope for the most of you the end of the year is winding down nicely. I wish that were my case. For me it's pretty hectic. That is how it is always. It would be a little bit silly of me to expect a really relaxed end of the year. YouTube is a pretty busy month in December. Here I am with some sewing content for you. The pattern I've chosen to make not as pajamas <laughs> is the tranquil lounge set from Love Notions. This in the past used to be called Namaste. It had a name change I, I believe last year but it is the same pattern. This is one that was released in 2018. Last year it was updated. It's got the full size range from extra small to 5x, full bust and a standard bust. I made a pair of pajamas, beautiful polka dot, black with white dots and I made the contrast details in a red knit. Lovely, lovely pajamas. I have worn them so, so, so much. I used rayon spandex, which I think is a really nice fabric for pajamas. Really soft and supple and just beautiful. It's not too hot and it's not cool. So I think it's perfect for pajamas <laughs> and lovely, lovely set. I always thought the fit of the pants especially was so good. I knew I could just use the pattern and make regular pants that weren't pajamas. Same as the top, beautiful. So I decided to do just that. The Tranquil Lounge set is the Feature Friday pattern for today. It's only $5. I'll leave you my affiliate link down below. Don't forget to use my code Karina10 for an extra 10% off. I have mentioned this before, but in 2023, my code is going to change. I'm still going to have a code, but it's not going to be Karina10. <laughs> so make sure you always check in the description box what is the code that is working so that you know and you don't end up using the wrong one and it doesn't work. I have filmed a video already about this pattern where I show you how to sew the neckline the way I like to do it and all the overlap details on the hem so have a look at that because in this one I'm focusing on other things I did to the pattern so if you wanted to use this pattern as pajamas you know you you can use cotton lycra rayon spandex bamboo modal spandex you know single brush poly and double brush poly I would be cautious with those because even though it works and they're really easy to work with they can be really really hot in my opinion for pajamas so I would rather not use those for pajamas because I didn't want these to be pajamas I decided to stay really far away from rayon spandex for me it is more of a pajama fabric most of the time <laughs> so I decided to make the pants with a really cool athletic knit all these fabrics I sourced them here in Chile at the city where my parents live so I don't have a huge array of fabrics to choose from like lots of variety I saw that was the only athletic knit in the shop and they had it in two colorways it's a camouflage print which I am not a fan of if it's in the beige green that sort of colorway I saw that they had one there in gray tones and that is more acceptable for me so I got some yardage to make pants and I'm looking at these as really comfortable pants that I can go to the gym in that I can go for a walk in travel with just comfy pants they're not gonna be tapered in like joggers. I'm not gonna put a cuff at the bottom. That is not my jam at all. But I knew that the pajama pants were so good. These pajama pants don't have a side seam. So it's just one piece and you have the crotch shapes on the sides. So it's only an inseam that you sew and then the crotch and it's so easy. So the fact that this is a print where you can't really tell if there's a seam or not is really good. You don't disrupt it. And because it's sort of a straight leg, you don't really need that seam to be there so I'm more happy <laughs> and for the top I chose a sweater knit beautiful really lightweight sweater knit it's going to be super comfy to travel in and the contrast binding on the neckline I just decided to use a really lightweight black athletic knit that I had some leftover from for the top I cut out a extra large with a standard bust option from making it in the past I knew I had to add length to the sleeves so I added two and a half inches to the sleeves and I just got my pat pattern from the past which was a size L that would give me about zero ease at the hips you're meant to have around two inches of positive ease so in essence I should have cut the extra large for the pants but considering this is an athletic knee it's quite heavyweight I think it can take the zero ease at the hips for the type of pants I want them to be but I didn't print all the pattern pieces again I just brought my size large from the past and back then then I had added two and a half inches to the length. See that on the wrist and on the bottom of the legs at the hem there's a type of overlap feature that's got a curve. 
you finish that with binding so it looks really really nice I decided to eliminate these features for these we're just gonna have normal hems no curved extra features that are from the pajamas and especially for the pants I just wanted them just to be straight down it's easy peasy so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna eliminate these features on the pattern if you want to do that I mean if you like them do them but <laughs> For pyjamas, I think they look amazing, but I don't know if I want them there for pants I'm going to wear outside. So I just decided to simplify it. And what I'm going to do to the pants, you can do exactly the same to the bottom of the sleeve. So let's see. This is how the bottom of the Tranquil pyjamas look like. This is the leg. Now this is a type of pant that's just one piece, so you don't have a side seam around here. This is towards the back of the leg and this is towards the front. Now this is where you have this little detail that you sew on, you bind separately and it's a really nice look for pajamas but because I want to make these into joggers or just regular pants I just want to make these into regular athletic pants so I don't really think this overlap detail is in the context of these pants so you can easily transform this curve into just having a regular hem so I'm just going to overlap there where that red line is I can see the edge of the piece at the bottom and I'm just gonna align that there at the side seam this is temporary it's not that I want to get rid of this <laughs> so this in essence will just straighten out this and I won't have to add that piece but I still want to straighten this out I'm just gonna get a scrap piece of paper you know I recycle paper so this is an old paper from some instructions <laughs> so I'm just gonna align this right here I'm gonna join these and just make a straight line from one edge to the other and I'm going to add hem allowance because this one is finished with binding as well. So this doesn't really have hem allowance because it's finished with binding. So because I want to do a normal hem, I'm just going to add an inch. So I have an inch of hem allowance. I'm going to straighten this out here, straighten it out here. This is how the bottom of these pants are going to look now. Just normal, straight, no overlap details with this curve, nothing like that. I've just eliminated all that feature to have a regular pant with a regular hem that you can see my hem allowance you can see that these pants are just one big piece so it's got the front and the back together there's no side seam it's just all together so it's really easy to sew i've added my two and a half inches of length around the middle of the leg i've spread the pattern piece out and just drew the lines on the side i've cut out the pants these are going to be so 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 easy this is an athletic knit so i want these like joggers workout pants the print is a camo print but it's in gray tone so that is acceptable for me i do have some sewing to share with you because even though i do have the sewing for these pajamas from the previous video this time i focused on the extra things i was adding onto these pants i decided to add patch pockets on the side just because I know their pants I'm going to go out in, maybe I do want to carry something in there and the pajamas don't have the pockets. They don't have a side seam where you usually put in pockets. So I decided to just eyeball and make my own pocket piece. It's so easy. So let's see how I'm going to deal with that, how I'm going to put it onto these pants because I don't have references of where they're supposed to go. I'm going to create a large patch pocket to put on the side of these joggers. I know there's no side seam, but you can still sew on the patch pockets. <laughs> just to do something extra because I have a little bit of fabric left over so they're gonna be pretty big I'm gonna eyeball this I've basically drawn a rectangle on the top is nine and a half inches across about 23 centimeters and down 12 and a half inches about 32 centimeters this is gonna include 3 8 seam allowance on the side but I want to have a slant opening so on this top edge this way I measured five and a half inches so I'm just gonna do a little mark there and from the bottom seven and a half right there and now I'm just gonna draw the slant pocket opening now I want to draw some seam allowance on that slant that could be folded back so from here this way I'm gonna draw about an inch and a quarter out and I'm just gonna draw that line going off the rectangle there because I want to true it what I want to do now is fold the paper there where I want the opening to be I'm gonna cut this bottom bit right here and now having this folded I'm just gonna keep cutting here for a bit remember I've got the paper folded at the back I'm just keep keep cutting now when I open this I'm gonna have the exact shape that I need when I take the rest of the paper out I'm just gonna cut along that line I had drawn out here and it's gonna have the shape to be trued on the sides so it looks really funny <laughs> but once you cut this out of fabric you serge this and then you fold it back 
this is going to be the pocket opening and it's going to be nice and true there and there i'm going to top stitch it's going to be super simple so here is my extra pocket piece this is not part of the pattern so i'm going to serge this long end right here and then i'm going to serge this one here this one there and then i'm going to leave this side for later once this is already folded back like this then i'm going to serge all that together the top you don't need to do anything because it's going to be caught in the waistline of the pants so it's basically cleaning up this one, this one, and then that one once I've got this. Here I have the patch pockets. One's almost ready to be sewn onto one of the legs, but the other one is sort of half cooked. That extra piece that we had here, I've just surged the edge and then folded it back. And you can see it matches the edges perfectly right there. That was the whole point of creating this piece like that. So when it's folded back, it's nice and smooth on both of these edges. I gave it a hand baste. You can see the long stitches and then I've surged all the other edges. Because this side is not going to be caught into a side seam, you do have to surge this. On a regular patch pocket, this is usually caught in the side seam so you wouldn't need to surge it. But for these joggers, it'll be different because there's no side seam there. It's just an inseam we're going to sew. On this one, I have already done top stitching. I tried pressing this, but this is a fabric that doesn't really press and hold a crease at all. It's not like when you do this with woven linen or cotton. You can press and it'll be super neat. Not with this athletic knit, so I've just hand basted that. This is the top part of the pants and if I were not doing these pockets, I would just sew this crotch together, that crotch and then sew the inseam. But because I want to try one leg on to figure out the pocket placement, which is going to have to be on the body because I don't have that seam as a reference, I'm not going to do it like that. What I'm going to do instead is assemble this like any regular pant. Just pretend the side seam has been sewn, there's no side seam. And I'm just going to meet these two, the inseam. So what I'm going to do is sew an inseam, I'll do the same with this other one. And then once I've got it sewn, I'm going to actually slide this one leg on and look in the mirror and see where I want to place the pocket. Put a few pins there and then even with that inseam sewn, I'm still going to have access to sew the pocket on because this area hasn't been sewn together yet. Okay, so here I have one of the legs from the pants. This is the inseam there. I was able to turn this right side out and put it on just one leg just to figure out where I wanted the pocket. So this is the front here, it's the front crotch. And you can see there's a distance there until where the pocket starts right here on the waist. Here's the pocket opening. And I've just placed it there really carefully and hand basted that again. And this is how I'm gonna sew it. So I've turned the leg wrong sides out this is how I'm gonna have better access now if I would have known where to place it you know this would be much better than flat because this is an addition that I'm doing that's not part of the pattern there's no markings you know I've got to figure out the pocket placement on my own so I'm gonna make a mark on the actual pattern piece now to mark where I would put a pocket if I do this again in the future it'll be much easier to do because I'll know where to put it and then I can just sew this on the flat and then construct everything without all of this getting in the way I'm gonna use the twin needle. I've top stitched the patch pocket in there and I just copied the same placement for the other leg so both are on and I'm just keeping one of these wrong sides out. I turn the other leg right sides out and then I'm just gonna sew these like you sew traditional pants when you sew the crotch at the end. This is my favorite way to put pants together. So now you get this U type of seam, the front crotch together and the back crotch together and you go across the inseams. Last time I made these pajama pants, I added on a yoga waistband instead of increasing the rise on the front and the back of the pants. And that worked fine, so I didn't mess with anything. I was really happy with the way the pants fit last time. 
So I just did the same thing. I cut my own yoga waistband, nothing different, <laughs> super easy. I just make it about three to four inches smaller than my waist measurement. And then I sew that onto the pants on the top, easy, easy. And this is how they look. This is the camouflage print in gray tones. This is the front, here is the yoga waistband. And here are the pocket openings. They're slanted as you can see, it's just folded in and I've used the twin needle everywhere. It's really hard to see these features with prints, but they are there and I think they add something extra to the pants. You know, there's no side seam, but I determined the placement of these pockets by putting one leg in, pinning it onto my undies and just playing with the pocket until I was happy where it was. That's where I sewed it and then I copied the same placement to the other side. So the way I put these together was non-traditional. You know, I sewed the inseams first and then put one leg inside the other as you saw and then sewed the crotch. For the pajamas, you know, you could have just sewn the crotches first and then do the inseams. It doesn't really matter the order where you put pants together sometimes. You still end up with pants. And one thing I added was a slit on this inner seam. So I've made lots of slits lately. I love them. I've done them on the sides, the outer edge, in the center. Now I've got them in the inner seam because that is the only seam that we have in these pants. So on the inseam, last minute thing, I just added some seam allowance there. And I have the same seam allowance here and hem allowance, which is three quarters of an inch. I've got mitered corners right there. It was a really easy thing to add to these. I think these are gonna be great for traveling, for everything. I've brought so few clothes this summer for this trip, and I was really lacking something sporty like this that I could wear on the bus. I am gonna be doing some bus trips because here in Chile, my parents and my in-laws live very far away from each other. It's about an eight hour bus trip and I'm like going back and forth and this is going to be great for travel. It's going to be amazing to sleep in, to just, yeah, just be super comfortable. Now the top, I didn't really want it to be like the pajamas. I got rid of the detail here at the bottom of the hem and I just drafted my own cuff. You can see some images here, it's really easy. I just folded back the hem allowance and I just cut a cuff that was the same width as the bottom of the sleeve so I didn't have to stretch it to a feet or it be tighter. I wanted it to just be nice and loose. And also see the measurements on the screen there, fold it in half. I was gonna get about two inches and three eighths finished width of the cuff. Then I decided to add at the bottom some bands, but not the typical hem band that brings it in tighter to the body. I wanted them to be nice and loose. I wanted the front and the back to be separate so I could have slits on the sides. Just add them in on the round. So I did film that. Easy peasy, you can add this to anything. I didn't even use pattern pieces. I just basically used my garment. I had sewn it all, all that was left was the hem to figure out how to cut these because I had fabric left so why not? <laughs> so let's see. I had already finished it. I planned to hem it normally but then I saw I had a little bit of fabric left over. So that it wouldn't end up being so long, I chopped off about two inches of the length and I'm gonna do a hem band but it's not gonna go all the way around. So it's gonna be open here on the side seam so it'll look like a little slit right there. No pattern piece, I've just laid this out super neatly there and I've basically just cut it the same width here. This here is eight inches 20 centimeters so when I fold this my hem band is gonna be slightly smaller than four inches because it's gonna go attached to there it'll be super easy you just put these right sides together and sew the ends both of them and then flip them and then you have a band for the front and for the back separately that you can sew on I didn't make these shorter so they're just one to one I don't want these to like bring it in at the hips or anything like that I don't think that works well if you want these open areas on the side. Just cut two pieces, one for the front, one for the back. Here I'm sewing the short ends of these bands. I'm just using a 3-8 seam allowance. After sewing them, all I have to do is flip them. This is so, so easy, super easy. And then I'm just gonna have a separate band for the front and one for the back that I'm gonna sew on the round. 
it's just that they're not going to be united on the sides they're going to have really nice clean edges there and i'm going to have slits this is one of the side seams you can see the seam allowance there inside and these are the two bands they're finished on both ends what i did here on the right sides is i just sewed them together for about three eighths of an inch with a matching thread so they're like tacked together and that's it now i'm just going to make sure these match the seam right here right sides together and i've done the same on both sides and we'll just sew them all the way around on the round So here is my tranquil pajama top, but it's not a pajama top. It's this beautiful sweater knit. It's so lightweight and drapey and soft and gorgeous. So, so happy I found it and in this color that I love. And I did the same original neckline that you saw me sew last year. I do have a video showing you how to sew this neckline and doing this binding exposed so that you can see it. You know, if you're doing pajamas, you can use other types of things like trims and elastics and other lingerie type notions but these aren't pajamas so i've just used a really lightweight black knit and i've got cuffs at the bottom which are super easy to sew they're one to one so they're not smaller than the end of the sleeve and it just gives me a sleeve that reaches my thumb which i really like and then at the bottom i have these hem bands that are open on the sides love that makes it a little longer so as i said i had finished sewing the whole thing i was about to hem it normally when i decided to add this feature so that it wouldn't end up being so long i chopped off about two inches of the length it is so beautiful i'm just so happy with it here is my tranquil pajama but it's not a pajama it's just a sweater it's a lovely sweater knit i love this color just got it over black pants here but i can also wear it with my tranquil pants and that you'll see next and the details of this neckline are just so pretty the binding the way i sew it that is exposed i think highlights it really well and i've done it with a contrast black so pretty i've got added cuffs just for an extra length and something different i also added the hem band which is not part of the pattern it's a split hem band sewn in two separate pieces but still on the round so it's a really easy way to get that split type hem there on the band and i really love it Here's a look at the pants and the top together. They can be worn together or separately, but focus more on the pants here. <laughs> I think I got the right length by adding the two and a half inches. I think the fit is great. I'm really, really happy with them. They're so, so comfortable. You can see I've got a high-waisted yoga waistband, which is always the best. I've got those added patch pockets. They're not pajamas, so I do have some space to put things in there. I'm really happy I added the pockets. I think the fit is great. I always thought these pajama pants had so much more potential to be actual pants also. So I'm glad I did that. The inseam is actually the only seam on these pants. So I decided to do a split hem there and I really like that. I'm really happy with this pair of tranquil pants, not pajamas, although they can be pajamas. I've actually worn this exact same clothes in real life. I had an overnight trip on a bus and yeah, I was gonna spend the whole night sleeping in a bus, hopefully, so I made sure I went really comfortable. I wore my top and my pants together. They're pajamas, but they're not pajamas. And I had some running shoes, super comfy. Here's the bus I took. It was an eight hour drive to another city all night. I was checking in and I bought tickets on the first floor which are sort of more comfortable they're bigger seats and they recline quite a lot so you can get comfortable if you want to <laughs> I just make sure I'm wearing comfy comfy clothes that's why this outfit was perfect and I had nothing like this to do these types of trips so really enjoyed it
when I got in the morning to Santiago I went fabric shopping again and I just took off the sweater because it was really hot and I just changed the top for something more summery it can go a long long way I'm really happy to have it love them both I can wear them together this is a solid I think they can go together if I want them to not that I was planning to make them be a set that can go together but they can and no one's ever gonna know that these were originally pajama patterns I think they can go a long way don't forget to check out the tranquil lounge set I think it's a great pattern both for pajamas and for normal clothes <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it this time find my links down below that's all from me I'll see you again very soon bye